like the 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 Ripple, the XRP Army, Brad Gerling House, what he can use the Treasury for. You know, they're out there trying to do good things for the overall community, even though it's for themselves at first. HBAR is unique. We we did a pretty deep dive into HBAR. Hey, everybody. Thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew. Welcome. Glad you're here. Today, we have a special treat. We have a registered investment advisor firm. We have Brian Corshane from DAIM specializing in cryptocurrency. So this is really rare. You don't see this out there very often. I looked around and Brian came up. I looked at, I was checking around just because I thought this was a really fascinating um, idea of just having, especially with all these SEC issues, just having a digital asset management firm a registered with the SEC, doing it by the book and able to provide that service because cryptocurrency can be so confusing. So Brian, welcome. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to talking to you today. Yeah, great, great. So Brian question on a lot of investors minds that I do have a lot of DIY investors on this channel. And I'm sure a lot of people would like to know right now, where do you think we are in your professional opinion in this crypto bull run? Yeah, we are firmly in a bull market to us. That was made clear back early part of last year when Genesis filed for bankruptcy and the price of Bitcoin went up by a thousand bucks. We committed to get the rest of our book back long because we had some cash reserve from back in the in the bear market. And we think we are firmly in a bull market. Now, you had these little interest sell offs like we just experienced here the past few weeks. Um, I put out our newsletter a couple days ago and we feel like the bottom's in. It's it, Bitcoin's actually today behaving like coming out of the last Fed meeting, the one that was in March. And so, yeah, we think we're uh, up and to the right and continuing through uh, this bull market here. Maybe, uh, maybe got two thirds of the way to go. Um, at the worst case scenario, you know, maybe a double from here. Yeah, I, you know, historically, I've been the guy who holds a little too long. And then I just DCA uh, during the whole next bear and it pays off. But I'm, I'm probably being a little overly cautious of where I'm, I'm, I'm cu cutting it a little early. Well, there's something unique about that, though, is if you can manage to hold on, you know, the next bear market, like the, the, the top to trough, it might only be, you know, about 400 days. So that's like, you know, you're kind of max pain where your stomach hurts and you're looking at your account. Um, so if you can kind of, you know, wait through that and DCA back through and you're okay with your position and you don't need to sell it, you're not getting any margin calls or you got, you know, any expenses due personally, that could work out just great. Very cool. So that sounds like good news. Next, I saw I was on your uh, on your look, reading your newsletter insights on your blog the other day, and I saw some of the metrics you use. One of them is the start to peak multiple. And you mentioned some very cool stats. We all love to hear the first bull run. Bitcoin did an 80x. The second built bull run. Bitcoin did 117x. Now, the last bull run, we only did a 21x, which, you know, when you look at that against a traditional investment, the <laughs> it's still pretty amazing. What multiple do you see happening this bull run? And something about that, I was just doing a presentation um, on Friday uh, on a road show up in, in Oregon, and I talked about this slide. And I had to remind people, I'm like, this is not a percent return. It's not an 80% return. It's not a 117% return. Those are 80x, 117x, 21x, right? And so for this next cycle, going from the past trough around uh, 15,600 in November, we think that uh, that's of 2022, we think that we're at least good for a 10x. And so we're currently sitting at a 3.5, right? So a double to having still two thirds left to go in the bull cycle is what we project that would put it at around just a little over a 10 X. And that's still a great number because you're coming from 15,000 for say, right? And if it's a 10 X, you're going to end up with $150,000 Bitcoin. I like that. It's not, it's more conservative than some of the others. Like if you, your plan B's or even Raul Paul saying he thinks 500, but he's going to cut it in half for his, uh, what does he call it? Uh, ignorance factor or whatever. So he's like 250. But I, yours sounds conservative, which I do tend to like. So if you, we just had the Bitcoin halving, obviously, you know that. I went over and I've, I've pulled some data and it seems like historically, on average, it's about 15 months until it ends somewhere around there. I think the first bull run was about 12 months after the halving. 
The second bull run was maybe 15. The third bull run was maybe 16. Since we're post having right now, how many days, months, etc. Not that we want to time the market, but how long do you think until it's all over this cycle? Yeah, so we, we think you got uh, about a, a year and a quarter. That puts us at, you know, what would that be? August 2025. So when you look at these cycles and, and through, there's definitely like the patterns and, and you see that. However, there's something to like put into that. You know, Bitcoin's been around since 2009. It's really been more widely known since 2014. So you have like this 10 year period. Over that 10 year period, you could basically say, hey, Bitcoin's annualized returns uh, 55%, let's just call it 50. So every two years, it's gonna double in value, okay? But a lot of people know this. And as you have the Bitcoin ETFs, you have institutional adoption, these institutional traders, if they want to do anything, it's be early. Be, try to be early in Dubai, which a lot of them missed because they didn't get into Bitcoin 2014. Yeah. But they were early in on the, on the Bitcoin ETFs. And they understand now looking at these cycles, they would rather exit early than be caught on the downward side and not lock in as much profits as before. So it's something to kind of, kind of keep in mind. And you were, you were saying this earlier when we started the video, you know, you've been in the case of just holding on a bit too long when things start to come off. Yeah. Um, and that's tricky, really tricky to do. And, and actually a lot of our investment management meetings, um, you know, we do a big one every month. We have sub ones each week. That is a big bulk of the topic we go over is what are going to be identifiers for the next top. And, mm, uh, that sounds yeah. fun. All right. Very cool. And what you, were, you, what you said there just reminded me, I watched the rewatch the movie Margin Call the other day. What's that saying? We're either early, we cheat, or we're smarter than the others. And we don't cheat and we're not that smart. So you got to be early. Yeah, got to be early. Yeah, great, great. That's a great movie. Historically, the entire crypto market, when it's all over from peak to trough, crashes, what, 60, 70, 80, 90%. This cycle, now we have uh, ETFs involved with Bitcoin and who knows, maybe even Ethereum if we're lucky, not sure about the others. Do you think we're going to have the typical uh, greater than 70% drawdown in Bitcoin and in alts? So alts will definitely have very large drawbacks. I mean, we just saw this here in this mini bear that was inside this bull market. I mean, the, the alts pulled back and, and the meme coins pulled back so much more than Bitcoin did. But this relates to what I was just saying prior is that now with adoption, more institutional players, when they go to buy back in at the trough of the next cycle, where we're going cycle four to cycle five in the way we measure it. And you could, you could email me later in, in our firm, we can get you this newsletter that we put out in this table, but you'll see in it going from cycle four to cycle five, Again, this, this information is going to be more largely known and these guys are not going to want to wait to be cute, right? So as it come, as Bitcoin comes off, and we're going to talk about that because it's, it's the big player in the room, right? It really correlates and yeah. controls everything else in the altcoin and meme coins. And so if typical sell-offs in the past, you know, 83%, 80%, 70%, now we're, we're working our way across time, we think these sell-offs are not going to be as drastic down and for such a large percentage because you're going to have these institutional buyers coming back in. Mm -hmm. They'd rather have put the position back on, experience a little bit further, you know, of a drawdown, but not miss because when it starts to go, when we, we can look at this just from the, the past like trough, you know, Bitcoin flashed down real quick over the course of a weekend, flashed down 15,600 or so ish. I mean, by the time the end of the week, we're back up another month later, we're back in the twenties. I've trained myself well to buy fear. That one I've got handled. You know, I, I DCA'd from um, November 2021 all the way down till I bought Bitcoin at, at 20 um, and just got a lot of alts the whole way. Now, if I can nail the exiting at the right time, this will be good growth for me because <laughs> I want to take some chips off the table this run. Not all of it. I'll always have some crypto. I mean, I, I love it and I love being in the space. Now, I, about six months ago, I was looking on your site and you mentioned adding, uh, you mentioned Solana as a new addition to your portfolio. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? And it's up to you if we'd love to hear what else you have in there and maybe how it's weighted. Because I know mm -hmm. this is a big, you know, for the DIYers, they want to know, am I doing this right? You know, or am I, right. am I too heavy in something like, I don't know, some meme coin, whatever. So 
if you can share what you can share, sure, we'd love to hear yeah. it. And it's worth talking about a little bit about history. So we've been managing money since uh, we got the, the license to be a licensed RIA back in on, on May 31st, actually, uh, 2018. So we've been managing money now going on six years uh, at the end of this month. And so start off with Bitcoin only. And what might sound elementary now, but in early 2020, when the roadmap for um, Ethereum to switch to proof of stake from proof of work, we looked at that roadmap and we analyzed it and we're like, okay, do we think we can get out performance relative to Bitcoin by making the strategic allocation away from Bitcoin? That answer was yes. We moved a portion of our clients assets, which is our one and only model portfolio that we manage that dictated an allocation. We got into that position and then we exited nicely on a, on a very large multiple. We were buying Ethereum for 250 bucks uh, back then. And so that worked out well. And then we, we, we took profits in that, raised some cash, and then we entered the bear market, right? We had some cash available through the bear market, which then allowed us to reallocate. We kept a small position in, in, in Ethereum through there, just because we still liked it for the, for the factor of it. Um, but that it got down to be sub 10% of the book at that time. And so when, the, when we committed to being in the bull market here in, in this cycle, we didn't know if we wanted to reallocate more weight to Ethereum. Meanwhile, we were screening for other alt investments, but we also didn't want to miss the start of this bull run. So we just reallocated the balance back to Bitcoin for the time being. That way we could be fully invested while we did the analysis to figure out what we wanted to do. And so now which will also seem elementary is uh, we, we were evaluating uh, all types. Um, we look at uh, XRP and, and HBAR and we look at uh, you know, Uni, so we look at all of them, right? We have a screener mechanism that does this. Um, and we kept coming back to Solana and we were trying to see how the negativity around FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried was playing out. And it came around that we, we, we liked the position and we put it on uh, in our book around uh, 27 bucks uh, last year. Oh, wow. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yep. And so um we, we had our thesis before we put the position on we have already mapped our our like exit thesis as well like we model it for what we're looking for and we also model for liquidity because like for for our size and what we do we got to be cognizant of like could we move the market if we go too far down the altcoin spectrum now as a retail investor you know, you know, 10,000, 50,000, you're, you're not going to push markets around that much. We can have a little bit of an, an effect on what we do here. And so we got to make sure that, you know, if, if the thesis plays out and it does a multiple, which Solana did, it actually outperformed Bitcoin when we took profits in it by 3x. So mm -hmm. Bitcoin went up, but Solana went up even more. As yeah. you know, it, it went to like right above 190, 190 bucks. Yeah. So we started to cover that position. And our, our main goal there um, is always, we benchmark to Bitcoin. Like if we benchmark to the S&P 500 to SPY, I think in a lot of investment meetings, it, they would think it's like a joke or something, right? Because like you got the S&P plowing, plowing along at a, like an 11% annualized return, where our model portfolio is, is up, is like a 58, maybe a little bit higher mm -hmm. annualized return. So yeah. it's like, it's different. So what we do is we benchmark to Bitcoin. Okay. And I think investors really need to think about this. And I find that they don't think about this enough is when you make an allocation in crypto outside of Bitcoin, you need to think relative to what, right? Like, you know, am I going to make this investment? Because if it underperforms Bitcoin, well, you just kind of, and you, and you cover that position, even though they both went up, but it didn't go up as much as Bitcoin, you actually impaired your unit to Bitcoin in the long run. The BTC ratio on, on all these altcoins, you should look at, we're not big technical traders and we can go into that some more, but like you got to understand what you're doing here. And and because and, otherwise, if you don't know enough about the project or you don't have a great thesis, then you need to maybe just stay in Bitcoin. Now, you did mention a couple tokens that are pretty popular on this channel. I get a lot of viewers for XRP videos. I get viewers for HBAR videos. And some other tokens that are in sort of that, I don't know, I almost want to say ISO 20,022 play space. You know, you got your XDCs and your quants, but XRP and HBAR people are probably watching this video. What's your opinion on those two tokens? Yeah, uh, so uh, XRP, we don't have an investment in it. I don't foresee us putting one on. I can say though that 
like the 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 Ripple, the XRP Army, Brad Gerling House, what he can use the Treasury for, you know, they're out there trying to do good things for the overall community, even though it's for themselves at first. But the agendas that they push and the war chest that they have allows them to finance progress in the space. So look on, on that aspect, you know, it's a good thing. Do we think though, relative to Bitcoin, that there's some outperformance, maybe in short times, but we take a longer time horizon. We, we, you know, we want to be in a position for over 12 months and we currently just don't see the outperformance relative the weight of Bitcoin and it being worth allocating away. HBAR is unique. We, we did a pretty deep dive into HBAR, uh, yeah, um, maybe three years ago. And so we found, and the reason it really drew us in, their, their team is got a, I mean, hell of a team, right? They got a, they got a lot of you know, PhD, they got a, a good team, but it's also the only protocol that's got a, got a patent. And so Bitcoin's been forked. It's, it's, a, it's public, right? You could go and you could, they created Litecoin out of Bitcoin. And so where HBAR, it's really the only project that has a patent. So you might have a thesis where there might be a company that wants to use HBAR for some type of proprietary stuff and that patent comes into play for chance. And so it depends what your investment thesis in, but, um, but yeah, that's, wow. that's, that's what we looked at in depth. Yeah, that's great. I didn't know about that HBAR patent. There's, I've done a, I've gone down the rabbit hole on their tech and, you know, really kind of viewed them as position for enterprise adoption, stuff like supply chain management, tracking, things like that. But that's, yeah, that is really unique. So thanks for that. Now, uh, Real quick, do you have any favorite on-chain metrics? It's probably uh, maybe too, probably need context for that question, I'm guessing, but top of your head, anything? Yeah, like... uh, so we use Glassnode. Glassnode's great. Okay. We are, we are like fundamental investors, but Glassnode is important because even though it's all technical stuff like MVRV, right? That, that's a good one to kind of watch, like the market value versus realized value and, and kind of understanding human nature because when you start to get this you know i, I got one of our, our bitcoin coins here and so oh, um nice. when, when this starts to really balloon especially in the last like four weeks of a bull market that mvrv score really starts to blow out but what you're what you're reading is people are also looking at their accounts and they're like wow i went from you know maybe having an account on coinbase you know 50 grand to now this could be 200 grand, you actually have like a wealth management issue going on your hands. You got a tax issue if that's in a brokerage account. If you're older, you might have a beneficiary issue, what happens in probate. And so, you know, th these runs, you really gotta watch and, and kind of pay attention to. And so looking at things like Glassnode and, and not only just for the numbers that it produces, but you can go and say, hey, what is the investor? What is the holder thinking? Now, just so we can dumb this one down a little bit, can you explain the difference between market value and realized value? Yeah, okay, so it's it basically ties back to, it can read every wallet, and it ties back to the last time the Bitcoin was moved, like relating to a, like generally a buy, because it gets put into a wallet, which means it was acquired and posted there. And so if that was at where you bought, you know, the $20,000 Bitcoin, well, this can read now, that we're trading at 130,000, right? It knows ah, the NVRV score. Gotcha. It's unrealized. Gotcha. Market value I versus see. realized value. I see. And you're like, that, that's synthetically your multiple gain, unrealized. I see. And when that's extremely large, human nature is, it, it, people might say, uh, you know, in social media, you know, you know it, we're going higher, we're going higher, hodl, you know, you're gonna see all these things, but in the back of their mind, what they're generally not writing is, Okay, I'm gonna buy a car, create a sell. Uh, I might use this to do an addition to the house. People got different things, and then you start to see the vacuum because some people chase it, and then you know the sophisticated like holders, the whales, kind of know this, and they start to to exit the positions, and you're kind of caught off guard. Gotcha. Thank you. Thanks for that, Brian. So now, based on everything we just talked about, it's easy to 
sort of see that you're much more into fundamentals versus technicals. I used to see so many technical analysts in crypto who are just good at manipulating chart, taking a fractal from this time period, moving it over to this time period and going, and this is exactly what's going to happen again. And people yeah. buy into it. I've made the mistake when I was newer to crypto of going, this guy looks like he knows what he's talking about. He moved that fractal over. Um, what you said makes a lot more sense. So what, what's your position on technical analysis in general? I'm yeah, so uh, I, I was on a Twitter spaces with Peter Brandt. I mean, this guy, yeah, you, you look him up on Twitter, right? Legend. He's got a big calling. And in fact, you could, you could look up that Twitter spaces and, and it was unique because, you know, I brought to, to Peter Brandt like, hey, we have the capabilities of putting pure crypto Bitcoin in an IRA for tax advantages. But then we talked a bit about technical. So that's, that's definitely worth checking out. But as it comes to, we, we look at technicals that are important. Like I said, glass node, it's really important too on like the, the entry and exit of a position for us. It's, you know, layering in liquidity, things like that. Mm. But our main thing is fundamental. Like what is the story and are we in a bull or bear market overall? And then if we're going to allocate away from Bitcoin, what is the story? And so with Ethereum, as I mentioned earlier, it was the, it was the change. It was the upgrade from proof of work to proof of stake. And then trying to exit somewhere in the seventh, eighth inning, if not earlier, is, is always the target goal. And then for um, Solana, we thought of the recovery. We like the speed of transactions. We thought that uh, complexities for just general retail and using L2s on Ethereum uh, it, it was not going to have the growth rate, mm. like just going straight to Solana. Yeah. Um, we like the story of things like Phantom Wallet. We like the start of all the meme coin craze on Solana. We like jump trading, getting involved. And then now we just saw, we saw yesterday um, that G, uh, Gito, J-I-T-O is gonna have restaking on Solana. And so even though we capitalized already on this position, we, we did keep a small, smaller position of around 10% of Solana in the book just for further participation. But when we capture that outperformance again, it was the fundamental story. Like, hey, we just we, we like where the stories played out with 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 jump trading getting involved. And then so let's allocate, let's let's scoop that and get it back and leave another small position. So yeah, definitely fundamentals and the story. Great, great. One of the things about fundamentals with me is I've been drinking the Metcalf's Law Kool-Aid probably way too much. Now, what's your opinion on things like um, Metcalf's Law in general? What you mentioned you know, daily active users uh, versus, you know, narrative, or maybe narrative is, maybe the daily active users could be part of the narrative. Do you separate out narrative from metrics? At, at which point do they come together? Um, just that one, and then we'll have one more question after that, and we'll wrap it up. Yeah, sure, Matt, no problem. I mean, we, we could talk all day. I know, I, I could go on all day. That's the fascinating thing about investing in crypto. And I'll touch this because you know, we're an advisor that, we don't compete against traditional advisors, but our clients generally have a traditional advisor as well. And we manage, we're the specialists for the crypto sleeve. And even though we're a smaller position, notionally that gets started versus generally their traditional position, crypto is the most exciting thing that they're talking about, right? Yeah. So we're, we're yeah. sometimes talking to clients more than they are their traditional advisor because it's got Apple stock in there and it's got some bonds and it's just boring, right? Yeah. And so when we when we look at like these technicals and Metcalfs and, and, and tying it back with like the evolution of technology and we're seeing this with AI and then we've seen it even more with like these like memes and NFTs on Bitcoin, like with, with th that recent spike in transactions with Rune and how it dro drove up transactions, even though now like the, the Bitcoin reward is halved. If AI and these bots and these computers are able to drive so much traffic and, and that's also part of the reason why solana came down so hard right. even though we were in a, a, a intra bear market of this overall bull market yeah it was having problems with the congestion right and so it, it was heightened activity transactions were getting stuck it was basically robots spamming the network and so it, it, it when you go to look at these metrics wallets and creating there's just so much artificial intelligence and creation and automation that can be done that I think it works for a bit in the beginning of the trade, no matter what, like if you, if you can pick up on that before it really starts to go participate, but understand that these usually come off really quickly. 
And you can also see another example of this is like looking at total lock value, TVL of like mm -hmm. DeFi projects. Yeah. As soon as something new comes out that's a little bit better, has a better yield, it's almost like in that first week, a bulk of AUM moves. It's crypto, it can move instantly, right? Like you just go into a stable coin if you want and you can just pivot over and hundreds of millions of dollars can move to another project instantly. So yeah. it's, we, 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 that's why we recommend a, a long thesis, don't day trade, fundamentals, yeah. get a story, try to be in a position for over 13 months. You gotta get through the noise. Yeah, I love it, I love it. And you said the word D5, which is a completely different video. So maybe we'll do it in the future on that because it's, it's going to take way too long to start that conversation here. But uh, all right, finally, I think this question uh, is going to be a really good one for you. And I actually I think you had a blog post about this and it made a lot of sense. And I agree with it 100 percent. But for our viewers, for a lot of the DIYers out there, um, why does professional portfolio management even in crypto, beat do-it-yourself investing, DIY investing. Yep. And so it, it, when, when you, you have por professional portfolio management like what we do, this is what we do all day. Like this is what we have investment management meetings about. This is what we've been doing. Yeah. I mean, just because the company has been around for six years managing money, which is actually quite a, a long time in the crypto space. Mm -hmm. I myself, I've been in Bitcoin since October 2014. Nice. I've worked as a professional in New York as an equity derivative sales trader. I started my career on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange in 2010, just writing paper tickets in the back. Yeah. So I bring a volatility level of knowledge to the space that understands investing. And so for the, you know, for the do-it-yourselfers at home, you got to understand like you, you likely have a day job or you have a career or a business that you're building. It's better to focus on growing that and building some excess capital that you can then put into Bitcoin either on your own just to hold for the long term or if you want to try to seek some alpha, then something like our model portfolio, which has drastically outperformed Bitcoin buy and hold alone over that same period, yeah. which synthetically allocates, increases more units to you, to your account, is the way to go. We find though, and we back tested our model versus like some day trading models, is that day trading, it's, it, it, you, see, you hear guys that are heroes for small amounts early on in a bull market. It is extremely difficult to navigate in a bear market and most people get wiped out. And then when, when they have, when they start with some gains, they might add leverage and then they go down, they go down the risk spectrum of really deep alts, Reddit tubes, and then you're getting yourself into an area where you could be subject to a rug pull or just like a Reddit group shift to another project and like you're caught behind. Yeah. And so um, it, it's, I do though, like I understand why people want to do it on their own and, and even some of our clients, like we have a bulk of the assets that we manage here, according to our model portfolio, it's proven, it's been working, but they, they want the excitement of life too. And, and, and why not? Right? Like, you know, they might have 10 grand on their phone that they want to whip around and do, I don't advocate it, but I understand it because life's worth living right Yeah. in, in doing. And so, uh, yeah. that, that's, I, I really strongly avoid, um, becoming a technical trader thinking it's going to be your day job. Yeah. Don't do that. No, I agree. Even the fundamental DIYers, it's still, there's so much work involved in doing research. You work an eight hour job every day. You're going to come home and read, uh, you know, kind of get into analysis, blockchain metrics and reports that are super, super long and understand all these yeah. different metrics and then allocate. And then just studying one chain alone from not only the uh, fundamentals of, of usage and blockchain metrics, but then also, okay, let's look at the tech of the blockchain. And you're not even a technical person. You just, it, it's like a second job just to maybe figure out what to hold. So yeah, I agree with you 100% there. Another thing you reminded me of is even Peter Brandt, which we're talking legendary technical trader says, um, I, I could be quoting, I believe I'm quoting him right. He's like, no, if we look at it, I'm wrong more than I'm right. It's all about me basically knowing how to set my stop losses and manage my risk is how I come out on top, right? But that's just so much. It's work. tough. And, it's and, tough, and he's yeah. a longstanding professional. Another element to that, though, too, is, is sizing, right? Like Sizing, uh, yes. You, you got to watch the, si the size of your bets, right? You, you, you want to have a um, few large gains and many small losses. Yeah, that's exactly what he said, too. So... 
Good stuff. Well, um, thank you, Brian. This is a great call. Uh, I, I believe a lot of the viewers will find a lot of value in it. Now, how can people find you? I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below. Other ways they can find you, Twitter, things like yep. that. Let us know. Yeah, there is. Our, our company, Twitter, lo looks at the space from you know, a, like a, a wealth management standpoint with like, hey, this is our view from a fundamental point of view. And that Twitter handle is D-A-I-M, that's Delta Alpha Indigo Mary underscore I-O, like internet operations, great place to start. Our website and blog has a lot of information. That's also D-A-I-M dot I-O. And then you can see our blog from there um, and what we do. And, and something else that's unique is, and I think a lot of people still don't know is that when you do crypto wealth management, it's just not a brokerage account. You might now also want an allocation into an IRA a, a traditional IRA or even a Roth, which has tax-free trading gains and it's tax-free at times of distribution. There's 401k applications. You might want to set up a trust account. You might want to have beneficiaries and you might want to have this all in one place. And those are things that we do in, in helping our clients along with like, Hey, maybe these are some ways to mitigate taxes and stuff like that. And there becomes more of, Hey, I'm just, invested in Bitcoin, it's like, hey, I'm taking this seriously. It's becoming a larger portion of my portfolio overall. I want this professionally managed. All right, everybody. There you have it. Brian, thanks again. We'll do Matt, another one soon. It was a great chat. Yeah. Looking forward to doing it again. All right.